let's talk about the brute force calculators. So you're saying, tell me if I'm steel manning your case correctly. So you're saying chat GPT, alpha zero, grok, all of these are just brute force calculators, consolidators, aggregators, but not really intelligent models. And if you are making that case, if you relegate them to the status of just brute force calculators, then would it be fair to extrapolate that anything chat GPT does today, I can do it if I have the right amount of time and resources, computational power and access to data because they're not generating any new insight, right? They're just aggregating data. So I should be able to do it as well. Yes, the issue is, of course, that what ChatGPT is doing is it mostly reproduces patterns that it sees in the training data, not in the sense that it only regurgitates ideas that are there. It's able to combine ideas, but it's uh, okay. basically exploring a latent space that is already defined by former human output. And so uh, because it is meant to approximate human performance and its benchmark is human output, not limited to an individual human being, uh, or the human speed. So in, in this regard, it becomes uh, superhuman because it's more comprehensive, more well-read in more fields than a human being could ever be. And it's much faster in combining these ideas than a human could be, being could be. But it doesn't seem to be as good as humans are at generalizing ideas across domains. If uh, a human being would be able to read every language in the world and would be reading all the available books in every language, a human being would probably discover new connections between, say, arcane Chinese medicine that has never been translated into English and uh, English me medical literature or uh, Russian medical literature yeah. that has not been completely um, digested by um, Western scientists and so on. And so it should come up with interesting and beautiful hypotheses, right? You as a human being would do that. And ChatGPT doesn't do this. But this is not clear if this is a um, limitation of the algorithm. I'm very hesitant to say this is just food force. Because the hypothesis behind the scaling um, hypothesis is actually that there is a certain universality to the, all these algorithms. That means if you train different algorithms that are general enough on the same data with enough compute, they lead to similar models with similar functionality. Yeah. And that might also apply to human minds. So if we were to train a neural network or a transformer or RNN on your input and output for long enough, with enough resources, you will wake up in it. Right? Once you realize that it's a very radical hypothesis, is this actually the case? Because the neural network clearly works differently from the way in which your brain is doing. Is this still equivalent? Is this learning algorithm so general that it doesn't really care about the substrate, about the way it's implemented and uh, the details of the learning algorithm, the details of the loss function, the details of the update rules of the system? Or is, is this really not important at all? And uh, do the, are these things in the long run equivalent? And I don't know that. So I wouldn't say this is just brute force. I don't know that. It's really an open question at this point. But it seems to me that human beings are able to learn with dramatically less data, generalize much, much earlier. And it could simply be that we need to tune the model slightly better and then the generalization clicks into place. And maybe our generalization ability is not because we have a better loss function, which I strongly suspect is the case, that our consciousness is the result of having a different loss function, mm -hmm. that we optimize not for next token prediction, but for some kind of coherence criteria and that is better captured in energy-based um, objective functions of learning. Um, that's one way of looking at it, right? But it's so far open. I suspect that um, 2AI has never been tried yet. 